Dream dropped his response video. Finally. This is not... Really? Really? I'm trying to make an intro. Really? I'm trying to make an intro. Okay. Dream... Come on. Okay. Dream <laughs> dropped his response video. And I watched nearly the whole thing. There were some parts I skipped, honestly, because I thought he was cooking. I thought he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's cooking here. And there were some parts I skipped because I just thought it was dumb to, to keep going about the same thing over and over again. But I pretty much watched the whole video. I, I mean, the video is, what, an hour, 20 minutes long? I probably watched 40 minutes of it, so like half of it, um, maybe 50 minutes, you know what I mean? But I watched a lot of the video, and I'm going to give my thoughts about it and uh, what I thought he did really well on what he cooked, and if I believe him, or I think he's full of shit. So, first off, I actually wrote some notes while I was watching this video. Uh, first off, I want to start by saying the video is very well edited slash put together. That was the very first thing I noticed when watching this video. It's very well put together. Uh, it was clearly clearly something he like actually put effort into. It was very serious. Um, and I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. I think that's a lot. It's, I think it's really cool, uh, making a video like this instead of making like a video of you just talking in the camera. And honestly, if he did just talk in the camera, I wouldn't be like, oh, well that, that means you're a predator. That means uh, all the allegations are true and you know, you are what they say you are. But I think him clearly taking it this seriously is a good thing. So that's the first thing I noticed. It's very well edited, very well put together. The second thing I noticed in this video, so this whole video is titled The Truth. Clearly, you know, when you watch this video, you think he's going to be talking about his, uh, his grooming allegations, right? His pedophile allegations. And he starts off the video saying that an old fat picture of him was really him. Apparently for several years, there was this old picture of him when he was really fat, like going around the internet. And he was like, oh, that's not me. That's not me. But in this video, he says it's him. And I just find that so stupid. Why? What a horrible way to start the video. Like, why would you start the video with this and not your grooming allegations that are way more important than a picture of you when you were really fat? It makes no sense. But then after this, when he talks about how fat he was back in the day and, you know, how his weight loss story is really inspirational or whatever and he's really proud about it. Which, which I think is fine, but I just think it's weird to, for this to be at the beginning of the video. But after that, he talks about his speedrun cheating scandal. And how, like, I don't understand that. He's already talked about his speedrun cheating scandal. Why is he talking about this picture of when he was fat, and then immediately talking about his speedrun cheating scandal, when he should have just started the video talking about his grooming allegations? It's, it's like... Dude, you should have put this at the end of the video. That, like, that's so weird to do, in my opinion. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, after this, I'm kind of just reading off all my notes I have here. After this, he talks about thirst traps. So I'm going to break down multiple things that Charlie said because I respect him. I respect his opinion. I think he's a super reasonable guy and I think he's an awesome content creator. One of the things that he said is that I post creepy pictures and thirst traps. He does post thirst traps. So that's the first thing I'm going to talk about. Uniquely, because I didn't reveal my face until last year, I can actually pretty reasonably show you every photo and video of myself that I've ever posted on the internet. So they're going to start scrolling by now in a completely random order. While you watch, it's important to note that what you post on something like Snapchat is very different than something you'd post on Instagram or Twitter. Snapchat runs ads every five or six photos and encourages you to post upwards of 100 photos or videos a day to have the most growth and make the most money. They only last 24 hours like an Instagram story. So on Snapchat, you kind of just spam anything. So for me, it's silly filters, my cat, whatever food I'm eating that day, I get a haircut. Because of that, it's much easier to take one silly photo from Snapchat out of context and make it out to be something that it's not. And in this, he says, take one silly photo from Snapchat out of context, which I, I also think is so weird. Uh, like the pictures that he posts, how can they be taken out of context? Like he has a ton of thirst trap type photos and he blames it Two later in the video about the fake accounts using captions to make it look like thirst traps. On top of that, there's a lot of fake accounts that I think people fall for all the time. They post thirst trap captions using my photos. And with how many likes they get, there's a lot of people that casually scroll Twitter and think their posts are mine. There's one specific one that was extremely popular and verified before it was suspended. It posted tweets like this and this 
and this. These are just completely normal photos I posted of myself with no caption, but they repost them and put a weird caption. <laughs> Which the caption does contribute to it, but come on, look at this. Like this is a thirst trap type photo. Which I don't think is wrong making these like thirst trap type photos. I think it's cool, you know, people posting photos of like uh, their body or like their face and they're really proud of the way they look. Especially when, you know, he had a point in his life where he didn't look good. But when you post photos like this, you have a young audience and you have grooming allegations against you. It's just kind of odd. So I don't really think it's a case of, oh, let's take one Snapchat picture out of a thousand that he's posted and make him look weird. I think him posting that stuff and having allegations is what makes him look weird. People post like cringe shit all the time and nobody really cares because they don't have grooming allegations <laughs> against them. A lot of people also say stuff like this. I don't know why he still uses Snapchat. It's still kind of weird. I told you, if you're a grown man using Snapchat. Which I think is super reasonable to think. If you don't know that there's creator accounts now that work very differently to normal Snapchat accounts, you can promote stuff to millions of people through Snapchat's algorithm. And even as of recently, you can make a lot of money, obviously encouraging you to post whatever random stupid photo you took. Now, I do agree with his Snapchat take here. I, I think it's completely stupid to be like, um, why is an adult using Snapchat? Um, that's just weird. There are a ton of creators that use Snapchat. This is a very normal thing nowadays. David Dobrik makes like $10 million a year only using Snapchat. Like Snapchat is for like the creator economy. It's a way of them to make money. And two, I don't think it's weird for you to use Snapchat if you're older. I definitely think Snapchat is a primarily younger audience uh, app. If you're just like sending snaps to people um, and trying to do like a thousand day streaks or whatever. I don't think anyone really over the age of 20 does that. Uh, but, you know, a bunch of creators use it to be like, oh, I think it's weird that Dream um, has a Snapchat account. Like, that's nerd shit, bro. Uh, I, I have a Snapchat account, too. Uh, I post on Snapchat. I post on the Snapchat Spotlight. You know, Snapchat's a cool little app to grow your community. And uh, there's nothing wrong with using Snapchat. That's he, He's based. Snapchat is based. So this next thing he brings up too, which it, again, I'm going to say this again. It's wild to me how we're so far into this video and he hasn't brought up really grooming allegations at all. But apparently he has a Twitter fan art account, which personally I think is kind of weird. Uh, but people say on his fan art account, him liking pictures of art is weird, which I don't really understand. Neither have I actually heard anybody say that, by the way. Uh, but but this, this Twitter account with his fan art is ran by someone else. And that's basically what he says. He's like, oh, you know, I don't run this Twitter account. Somebody else runs it for me and they like all the pictures. This is another nothing piece to me. I don't know why... He's bringing this up at the beginning. There are far more important allegations that he think he should be talking about before he talks about how the picture of him being fat was true, his fucking Minecraft speedrun being fake, which he's already, I think, made a whole video talking about it, and someone liking fan art on his account. Like, why, why is this his priority, is what I thought watching this. It makes no sense. Next, he mentions how his buy from dream video where he unface reveals is satire and was never serious. And people were, you know, thinking it was serious because he's the cringe Minecraft guy. And, you know, he was never serious about hiding his face reveal, which to me makes absolutely no sense. Like... Sure, some parts of the video were satire, like his friends calling him dumb and ugly and that he needs to put his mask back on, but the video itself wasn't funny at all, so it didn't seem satire in the slightest. And he literally deleted his face reveal video. Or, or at least that's what he said. Eventually, you know, he put it back up on his channel and people realized he just made it private instead of deleting it. But... People thinking you were being serious about removing your face off the internet aren't doing it because they hate you. That's literally the tone in your video that you made. Another topic he brings up is that his audience isn't young. His audience is actually one of the... He, he says this, I shit you not. 
one of the oldest audiences in all of the Minecraft community, which is just fucking laughable because you can look around at uh, his Twitter, at w how his community talks, what they look like. I mean, just fucking go on Twitter, look at Dream, and look at his followers and scroll, you know? Look at all the people posting these cringe parasocial tweets, like uh, this person saying, I'm really scared for what's about to happen. What if I have to unstand Dream and all the others? What other interests will I soon find? I seriously won't be able to go through it. This reads like a fucking joke tweet, but this is actually serious. So, I mean, you see all this stuff, and it's just a complete joke for him to be like, actually, my audience is really old. Come on, dude, just look around. But his point, one of his points that his audience is older is that he swears and curses outside of YouTube. So his audience can't be young. That's just a fucking dumb <laughs> justification. That makes no sense. And then he shows his YouTube analytics, showing that, oh, you know, the, the people that watch my videos, there's actually, like, only 11% of them are 13 to 17, and, you know, the vast majority of people that watch my videos are over 18. Um, which, again, is such a dumb justification to me, because people on YouTube always lie about their age. Like, like, even if they don't need to, I don't know if there, I, and I think there are actually, there are features on YouTube, like, you can't watch certain music videos, you can't watch certain, like, gameplay videos, I don't think, if you're under 18, and so, for me, I was a kid who played Grand Theft Auto at 13, so, you know, I, like, Grand Theft Auto is not a game, really, that 13-year-olds should be playing, um, so, you know, on every website I went on, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm 18, I'm 18, I'm 18, just so I didn't get any, like, stupid censored shit, so I think people lie about their age all the time, even if they're on a website that they don't necessarily need to lie about their age, because they're just used to lying about their age, right, so I think it's kind of stupid to be like, oh, look, at, let's look at my YouTube analytics, as you can see from my YouTube analytics, everybody, uh, or the majority of people are over 18, like, come on, dude, just look around, look around your community, look around your Discord, I don't know if he has a Discord, just, you can tell people's age by the way they talk, um, you can also just fucking look at a picture of your followers, like, some people have their, like, a selfie of them as their profile picture, so, and, and, and they, the way they talk, especially, it's like, yeah, your audience is young, I, I don't know why you're saying, actually, my audience is one of the oldest audiences in all of Minecraft, that's just a lie, that, I mean, that's just not true. Next, he goes at Charlie, Moist Critical, and says that his pictures are pretty much just like dreams, but... Charlie gets away with it because his audience is older. And not gonna lie, when I saw this, I was like, hmm, maybe I am biased against Dream because I look at Charlie's photos and I'm like, oh man, he's just being a goofy little guy. Look at that. Look at that mask. But when he, when Dream does it, I'm like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> like literally unspoken Riz versus sexual harassment. But then I thought about it. I thought about it for like one fucking second. And no, the, the reason that I think Dream is weird for these pictures is quite literally only because of his allegations that he he has yet to talk about in this video by the way he really hasn't brought up any of his allegations yet by the way which is fucking insane we're 24 minutes into the video at this point and he hasn't brought up a single allegation when that's the first thing he should be talking about but if dream didn't have allegations against him like this like grooming allegations I, and I imagine most people, wouldn't think anything of these photos. They'd be like, oh, he's just being goofy, you know? But child predator allegations plus photos like these, where a normal 20-plus-year-old would post something like this under the guise of it being funny when it's a filter clearly meant for kids, you know? No actual adult is going to put this filter on seriously. They're just going to put this filter on to be like, oh, look at this, this funny little goofy filter. Um... So, when you have predator allegations, plus putting filters made for a younger audience, obviously it looks more weird than a normal person with no allegations. So, I, I think this comparison is pretty good on a surface level, but I mean, just, just thinking about it for a little bit, no. 
no, this isn't a good comparison at all. Finally, 25 minutes into the video, he starts talking about the grooming allegations, and he cooks. I'm not gonna lie, he cooks. As I thought he would, honestly, every single allegation I've seen, and I made this video, I made a video talking about this, it's in my Dream vs. Gumball video, uh, every single allegation I've seen, and I've looked at, like, literally every single allegation he has against him, every single Twitter account that's posted something against him, everything I've seen has no evidence. The evidence is very shitty, uh, the evidence doesn't prove anything the quote-unquote evidence uh literally nothing there's no evidence um also what a freak some people are dude i don't understand why you would make fake posts and fake stuff being like oh this guy like come on get a life y'all are losers get a life it's it's so stupid um, but then after this, he talks about the dream versus gumball situation. I made a whole video talking about that, so I'm not going to talk about the dream versus gumball situation. But then he brings up the dream did what allegation where, you know, the allegation was basically he was sending moaning videos to minors on Snapchat. And when I saw that video, I think I talked about this in the dream versus gumball video as well. Maybe not. Uh, but when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is also shitty evidence, probably an edited video. I wasn't, you know, I didn't want to say it was an edited video. I wanted to hear Dream's response first. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an edited video. I I'm like 100% sure now. Like, like, okay, it's a, sh a shitty edited video. It's a horribly edited video. So the video, and if I can find it, you know, which I think I can actually, I'll, I'll put it on the screen here. Top of that, no one even taps to open the Snapchat. There's no finger, you can't open snaps with a button, but it doesn't even matter because you can see that no buttons were pressed. So how did it open? Nobody touches the screen. You can't open a Snapchat without tapping the button to open it. So ignoring the fact that there's no proof it's even me, how is this video even real? How did it open? The video doesn't even make sense. People have also pointed out that frames are missing and that the normal Snapchat animation doesn't play at all. But despite all of that, hardly anyone asked any questions. But the video is essentially somebody with their phone out, so not even doing like a screen recording. Somebody with their phone recording another phone has the Snapchat app open and it so says Dream Dream at the top. And it says, oh, you have a new Snapchat from Dream Dream. And without even clicking on the Snapchat, it opens magically. And there's like, it, it's clearly edited when it opens. And it's like this weird, weird text on the screen. And Dream is like, oh, oh. And it's it's really bad. It's a really bad job. I, I thought it was edited when I first saw that. I was like, wow, this is horrible. So I'm not going to lie. He cooked again here. Uh, yeah, I, I totally believe him that this is a fake Snapchat video. Um, which, you know, again, sucks that people are so stupid that they would make a fake video against someone. Like, come on, like I said earlier, let's, let's get a life. Let's do something productive with our day instead of being a complete degenerate. Um, but yeah, this Snapchat video is the worst editing I've ever seen in my entire life. And finally, here he is at the end showing how easy it is to fake DMs with people, how easy it is to fake voice messages. Okay, XQC, I know you're probably watching this. I want you to address this. What do you have to say for yourself? It's irrefutable proof. Look, here it is on a second phone. Prove to me you didn't send me this video. <laughs> or, you're a pervert. Forever. And everyone watching this will now know it. Or Pokimane, you've been getting some hate for your cookie prices recently. And I don't mean to expose you, but you did say this to me. And I think that's disgusting. What do you have to say for yourself? What more proof do you need? I also have the cookies she sent me and a signed note from her. This is irrefutable evidence. You get the point. I made all of those pieces of evidence in 10 minutes. With and I'm actually going to take this one a step further because, you know, he basically shows these fake texts with Pokimane and XQC. And with the XQC thing, you know, he shows a fake Snapchat video of XQC going, ah, ah, which I think is a clear audio rip from one of his streams. Uh, XQC is a live streamer in case anyone doesn't know, which I'd be surprised if anyone doesn't know. But XQC is a live streamer, so I'm sure that audio is ripped from one of his streams. But I'm going to take this a step further. Because with AI and deep fake voice shit, 
I think someone at some point is going to use someone's deep fake AI voice saying something that the real person obviously didn't say and try to use that against them, which which is crazy, which is crazy. So here soon, I, I think there's going to be a situation because I think the the um, the technology is already there. I think there's going to be a situation pretty soon, like within a year maybe, um, where somebody has allegations against someone and they're using like a fake AI deep fake generated voice program and be like, Oh, you see, this is what the person says. And I think a lot of people are going to believe it because people aren't used to that kind of technology. So it's really scary, man. I mean, you can't believe videos anymore because people edit shit. You can't believe if you hear someone's actual voice anymore. So it's really scary. Again, I believe him here. And that's pretty much how the whole video goes. Honestly, uh, he, 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 I, like in the first half, I'm not going to lie, I thought he was being stupid. And I do still think he's being stupid by having his allegations, the most serious allegations of all time, being put at the end of his video. I don't know why you would ever do that. Why would you not put these the serious allegations at the beginning of your video? Like, why are they at the end of your fucking video? It makes no sense. But at the, at the beginning of this video, I thought he was just being an idiot. I was like, why are you bringing up all this stuff that really doesn't matter? Like your Minecraft speed run. Like, what? Like, nobody cares that you cheated, bro, other than losers. Nobody cares that you cheated in your Minecraft speedrun. Um, and, and and I was like, God, this is so stupid. This is a horrible video. And I, I was, at the beginning of this video, I was trashing him. I was like, this is stupid. This comparison is dumb. And everything I said at the beginning of this video, I 100% I stand by, you know, like... Uh, like him doing that stupid comparison with him and Charlie and Moist Critical, I think is just dumb. Uh, but overall, I believe him. I don't think he's done anything, or at least if he has, there's no proof of it. There's no good proof about him doing anything at all. Uh, he does do a lot of cringe, you know, thirst traps. Um, that's for sure. But I, I have yet to see any amount of evidence that he has been weird with uh, with minors. So until I see any evidence like that, which it seems like I'm not going to, um, I just believe him. And I don't think he's done anything like that. Um, and I think everybody who sees these shitty edited Snapchat videos on Twitter and is like, oh, that's enough proof. He, he's definitely a groomer. I think those people are just complete idiots. Um yeah, like, uh, it, it's just so dumb to believe a video. And that's the worst edited video of all time, that Snapchat video especially. And that's the one that really took off that a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, this guy's a groomer for sure. Um, and it just sucks that people are, A, either too stupid to understand uh, that it's a fake video. Or B, they just hate Dream so much that they want everything against him to be fake. And it just sucks that there's people like that out in the world, honestly. Uh, but yeah, overall, my impression is I believe him. I don't think he's done anything weird. Uh, he made this video really well. It's really well made overall. Uh, there's a bunch of things that I think he could have changed, to be honest. Uh, but him actually addressing everything and then laying out you know, his whole, like, reasoning and laying out the, um, like, landscape of everything, I guess. Uh, he does a really good job. And, yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about. And uh, thanks for watching.